Yeah, so we had a great conversation last time about um, you know just trends in healthcare, and it was very much intended to be um, helping traditional telephony, technical, IT type people really get the broader picture of what's going on in, in healthcare and, and, you know, as opposed to, you know, what we tend to focus on of, okay, how do I deploy this or how do I upgrade this or why do I do this or how do I justify this? Um, really focusing on top down, you know, at the, the role of the business is to provide healthcare or to provide payment for healthcare. Uh, and the question becomes, um, you know, what, what's, what's, how do we do that? How do we support that? And this session is really intended to be more of, a, okay, now that we have your interest, let's talk about some specifics. Let's go in and talk about some of the solutions, uh, the, the products, right, that, that, that support that concept. So with, uh, as you mentioned, with us today is, is Mark Wexler. Mark does a whole lot of, um, one, he's kind of a, a healthcare expert in the vertical industry, uh, but also does a lot of our advisory services consulting uh, um, with customers who want to try to understand, um, you know, how to join the magic of, of you know, vision to execution uh, and road mapping, those kind of things. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. This is a, a, a special treat for me. Um, I always love to doing the, these kind of things. I, I'm excited I, about it, David. You know, when I, when I look at um, the sheer number of people that are attending uh, uh, today's event, um, there's a significant amount of interest. So let's jump into it. Yeah, no, that sounds good. So when we talk about um, y y UC, right, uh, at some point we we're talking about collaboration because we found right. last last time that there was a huge topic about um, communication and how do people collaborate, how do doctors collaborate, how do doctors collaborate with nurses. And this is not only inside the organization, this is between organizations, made from one hospital to another hospital or to a, a specialty. Um, and obviously also with uh, the the end, I'll call them customers, but we'll call them patients. Uh, and, and, and this one is really focused on more the internal communications, right? Right, right. So, yeah, so go ahead, I'm sorry. No, so I, I think when we start talking about those and the, the ingredients you know, that are needed to look at collaboration, right? If we just look at, you know, some, some will use the word unified communications, then the big buzzword was collaboration, and now it's almost engagement is really the big topic. There's some mm -hmm. things to drive success with that. Do you want to talk about some of those things that we think about yeah, at a business so, level? It, so, yeah, re real quickly, because, you know, I really want to jump into some of the solutions and the specifics, but when you look at the way it was, it, it has been done in the past, it's, it's very much been um, uh, a one-way street. One way either from the clinical environment um, saying we want this and then forcing the IT and telecom organization to pretty much deal with it or the other way around where IT and telecom uh, figure out what quote-unquote the answer is and then uh, 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 deploy it for or in some cases to the clinical user environment. But really what we're seeing now is that there's a, a, a much better a much more comprehensive 360 degree view of what's required to make all of these things um, really work for the enterprise. Um, and um, you can see this laid out on the slides. I, I tend to not like to read the slides, but just, just, just talk around them. You really have to deal with the, the healthcare business at large. And what that means is um, uh, when we look at these collaboration uh, uh, solutions, they have to support the full enterprise, not just a specific small user community, um, but, they ha but because the enterprise is so unique and the healthcare provider enterprise uh, particularly, um, in, in the vast majority of cases, they've got to be purpose-built. There are so many unique requirements here, whether you're a, a, a clinician, an administrator, or a uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a staff member that you really have to be able to support the business, the workflow, the clinical protocol, uh, and all of the information access uh, as well as delivery uh, requirements of that. But as importantly, um, it's got to be something which is practical and can be implemented by the IT and telecom organization um, not as a one-off, but as something that can be integrated into the into the daily support uh, uh, services and and be handled by the infrastructure from a communications access and transport standpoint. Uh, and then finally, um, there's really got to be a business case for it. The days of um, I of a clinician saying, 
I want X, whether it, and I'll be specific, whether it be something like uh, a, a unique uh, 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 voice recognition uh, communication service such as uh, Vocera, or whether it be a unique um, uh, standalone um, emergency notification capability. Um, those days are pretty much over. The ROI for those kinds of things really doesn't hold up long term. Um, it's got to be an ROI with tangible benefits that supports the whole organization. But when you combine all of this, you're really dealing with the organization as a whole, and that's when we see everything coming together, the user community and the, at the technical and the financial community, uh, and supporting it, adopting it, and really making valuable use out of it. You know, Mark, when, when we talk about some of the organization-wide deployment of some of these things, I mean, we also have to be cognizant of the fact that, well, not every organization, uh, every business unit within an organization is needing the same kind of capabilities, right? You know, we, I know you, when you do your adoption services, one of the things you do is you find the various user types or the user profiles and determine what kinds of tools are appropriate for each individual group. Um, and so maybe the, the 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 access to the the technology is is universal, but maybe how people use it um, within a team might actually be different. Oh, that's that's very very true, David. I mean, actually, when you look at the second sub bullet under common purpose built platform, it might be the same platform um, that everybody's sharing, but it has to be you have to be able to customize uh, the user access and services to support the individual users. A uh, a physician who uh, 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 not only uh, uh, needs access uh, hospital-wide may also need access while, while he or she is off-site. That's very, very different uh, in terms of not only the types of communication services that have to be put in place, but how he or she is going to use it as opposed to the uh, nursing community that happens to be resonant and working within the ICU or the PICU. Very, very different. Yeah. But again, utilizing the same common platform so in fact they can share, access, and collaborate. So, you know, in the spirit of kind of diving into the details of it, you know, we, Mark and I have kind of talked about three different um, types of applications that are, are used, right? And, and we're going to put them in these buckets of kind of the common communication tools. So, you know, and I, when I think of that, I think of telephony. Um, I think of even UC, for the most part, has become kind of generic. Um, you know, we're looking at more capabilities like conferencing and instant messaging and presence and how we might tie those things together. But they, they literally are very generic with a wide, wide, wide audience. Um, and from there, we'll talk about maybe I'm narrowing that down a little bit where um, I need something specific for nurses or specific for doctor to nurse collaboration. And two that we'll talk about is uh, Mutari and, uh, and ASCOM. And we'll probably talk about some others in there too. And then there's a third bucket um, that is, uh, we're going to call it the next generation, but understand that that next generation actually started years and years ago. Um, where, but I, I'd say within the last couple of years, some of the tools and technologies have caught up to make um, make it easier. Whereas before, it was all, boy, you've got to you've you've got to not only understand your business, your workflow, but you also have to understand all the individual protocols um, and the integration comp pieces were really really hard. Um, but that's changed. Um, so now the ease of integration is almost. Uh, you know, well, I'll call it the easy part. Um, and now it's really going back to more understanding the workflow. But doing workflow um, and, and thinking of that as the communication, not so much the phone call that might go back and forth. That allows us to go from person to person, person to machine, machine to machine, um, because we're, we're making it in a way the technology is more generic, um, but giving a whole lot more flexibility in how we do that. You know, David, as, as I think about all this, um, it, it, it occurs to me that the common communication tools um, are really today's baseline. Um, the, the things that um, one should expect uh, out of their, out of their quote unquote standard communications uh, uh, telephony platforms and then how to take best advantage and use of them. Um, the well-known application suites and middleware are some of those um, now commonly available purpose-built platforms that I that I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. But what really catches my attention now is the next generation services. Um, and the subtitle to that, in my mind, is next generation services that are now practical. 
Yeah. Um, so it's not new and bleeding edge anymore. Right. It's just the stuff that, boy, we can really do this now. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, that's the, yeah, it's, it's next generation from the standpoint of a lot of people are still oblivious to the fact that it exists, but it is not new and bleeding edge to your point. And, and so that's, it's a great way to kind of go from somewhat generic because we live it and breathe it. You know, we're all dealing in quote unquote PBX. Uh, but then how do we get more and more narrowed down to some custom solutions? And so when we, you know, I, I'm going to take kind of this first section of, you know, talking about the traditional telephony. Um, and, 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 you know, I, the first thing I think of when I think of unified communications, when I think of collaboration and engagement are the components that these things need to, to, to have. And I, I've been using this list as a kind of a, a litmus test um, to see do these solutions meet a true unified communications approach. And the first one is it's got to be user centric. Um, and, and that sounds like a, well, duh. Um, except when I tell you that most telephony teams don't think of their people as human beings or users. They think of them as extensions. Um, and, and so you add an extension. You don't add a user, you add an extension. Um, and that has to change because as we talk about some of these other technologies that are coming where I can have me logging into several devices at the same time, I still want my own identity, and it's now me as the you're calling me and I get to choose where I answer it or how I communicate it or how I respond. And so this, the, the, the movement is from extension-based administration to user-based. Um, and you know, from it, like an Avaya perspective, which I know a lot of people on this call have, um, this is where we start looking at system manager and we start adding users who have an extension. It's not that like extensions go away. It's just the center point is the user, not the extension. But then we start talking about things like presence, and that could be something as simple as the old school busy indicator. But again, what good does that really do you, um, knowing that Mark's light is not lit up? Because he could very well be, um, you know, in a meeting. He might not even be sitting at his desk. And the the idea of of a light being lit representing your availability is ridiculous. And so now we have to start looking at all of the ways that we might determine are you truly available and in what ways, which is the next one, a modality, talking about, well, what are the, all the different ways that you can interact? And then recognizing that, well, if you're on a hard physical phone that has certain limitations, um, what user experience should you expect uh, when you start looking at maybe a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android? Um, or you go from a phone small user interface to a large tablet interface, how does the context of that change? Uh, and, and what's appropriate to have similarity and connectedness and what's not? Mobility, Mark hit it on the head, of everyone is expecting to be functional, um, not just when they're sitting next to their telephone. Uh, and so, you know, to, one, to make sure that capability exists outside of the prem, um, you know, out in the network, out on the floor, whether you're truly mobile, um, but a lot of people are, I, I'll use the term portable, right? They're fixed, but they're fixed in a different place. Maybe they're fixed working from home. Maybe they're at a, they're traveling and they're in an airport. So they're not literally moving around like a nurse might be 24 hours a day. Um, but it's, it's, how do we define that? How, ultimately, how unrestricted are you? And then there's always the magic one that says, well, what about preference? And we find that you know, most companies have gone through a transition where they start by saying everybody has a hard phone. And then they say, well, nobody wants a hard phone. Let's give them all soft phones. And then they realize, well, that was a bad choice because not everybody wants a soft phone. Um, not everyone wants to use their cell phone to have long conference calls. Um, and so you very quickly realize you need all of those and you let the end user choose. As long as you can say, I am unrestricted, um, now I get to use it how I need to. And I think it doesn't mean every single user has to be custom. Uh, what it means is um, every group or worker type should have the choice of how they want to do that. And so, again, hey, I'm going to talk. Can you, yeah. start, can you stop there for just one second? Yeah. Um, I think one of the really important factors here for the healthcare community, community um, is the fact that um, for the more, the more important things relative to the user, such as presence uh, and, uh, and preference, um, the user, the physician, the nurse, the uh, respiratory therapist, the administrator, whatever, can really make their own choices in terms of are they available, are they away, 
um, how do you how do you prefer to uh, be communicated with at any given point in time? And that's critically important because for the for the vast majority of these users, um, you don't want to link them to a physical location or to a physical device or scenario. You want to give them uh, the ability to have choice. Um, and I think that in the next couple of slides, if, if you keep that in the back of your minds, um, as, as David, you go through some examples, um, it will become really clear as to how you can take some of these really basic services and with just a little education and, uh, 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 and uh, assistance to help the user community understand how they can manage, how, how they have the ability themselves to manage their access uh, and services, um, uh, this, ca this can become a real productivity and efficiency boon for them. Well, and I, a big thing that you commented on right there was, you know, the again that flexibility and preference. And what we uh, what we run into is, you know, you, you specifically you said letting the end user manage their availability, and that becomes actually traditionally has become a flaw of the system, right? Because you have to manage your availability. You have to decide whether you're logged in at this device or that device. And in the old TDM days, or even the um, the IP-based TDM days, we'll call it H.323 phones, you could only be logged into one device at a time, which meant you had to really work hard to tell the system where you were and what you were doing. And I think that was one of the biggest flaws of, of that technology in that generation because nobody did. Um, it, it became hard. And mm -hmm. so one of the big changes, technological changes that happened is SIP, and the architectures that we look at are, you know, specifically with Avaya even, are, are the ones that say, hey, I can be logged in all these at the same time. You don't have to think about how you're going to communicate. You can just be there. You can just, it, that's a given. It's there. So the management of all of that becomes significantly easier than it has been in the past, and that's ultimately going to drive adoption. Uh, so simple that even a doctor can do it. Yeah, exactly. So some of the tools... <laughs> Some of the tools that we think of, you know, related to that, um, I, again, I, I'm not stating some brand new things, right? We're talking some of the typical desktop clients that exist. The one you're probably familiar with, um, if you're a Microsoft shop, is going to be something like Skype for Business, right? Where it is, um, it has its roots in instant messaging and presence, um, and obviously it has an integration to the desktop applications that you might have, like Outlook or like you know Word and 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 um, you know some of those tools that we we use. Um, and there are others, right? You should know that um, Avaya has a similar thing. Um, it's called Equinox. Um, you know, anyone with a barely modern system, I'll call it 6.3, you know, specifically you're talking core or power licenses, you get the entitlements for all this stuff. You get the SBCs that allow you to access um, and use these tools remotely, um, and you get the, the, uh, the entitlements to use instant messaging and presence, um, and depending on your license, you might have even collaboration and conferencing. But the point is to draw all of these various things together to one interface and make it flexible enough to use. And, you know, they're responsive, so you make them big, they're big. You make them small, they're small. Um, but, you know, very similar. So in integration to your meetings, one thing that I like about Equinox is, is that ability to, to see um, your Outlook calendar or your Google calendar directly from within the app. Not so much that I'm going to make this my calendaring scenario, but when it comes time to collaborate, especially with scheduled collaboration, um, the last thing I want to have to do is, and we all, we've all done it, you're going to join a conference call in, in five, 15 minutes, and you're going to have to, you, you, if you're driving especially, you're going to pull over, you're going to write down your PIN number and your participant code so you can join the stupid conference call um, and, 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 and not have to switch back and forth because you can't remember the participant code after you dialed the number. At least that's my world. Well, here I um, the calendar will will notice that you have conference calls. Will pick out the, the phone number, the participant code, and give you a button to push. So now I can push a button, and it will join me to that. And so it's really not 
not as a replacement for calendaring, but to draw out the collaboration components of calendaring um, is really, really powerful. Same way with instant messaging, right? Being able to go back and forth and handle conferencing, all that kind of stuff. Your history, we're seeing more and more of the AVI applications centralizing their call history. So it's not uh, like in the old days, it was while well, the phone had the, the, um, the list of your history, whereas now, um, all of Avaya's devices are either there or moving towards, so some of the Equinox doesn't have it quite yet, but um, the, the ability to have shared history and, com and aggregated history on all of your devices. Again, so you don't have to think, well, I made that phone call over here, now I have to go to that phone to be able to reply. No, you should be able to do that from anywhere, and that's certainly where the trends are happening. But since I think a lot of people probably know the capability or functionality of of Skype for Business, you know, formerly Link, formerly, gosh, we go back to live communication server, right? It's been around. Um, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the Avaya kind of capabilities. And I talked about these already, right? The um, This is a, a very much a GA product, uh, went GA last year, um, has uh, all the kind of components you'd expect, uh, you know, from instant messaging presence, collaboration, conferencing. Uh, integration and works across all the devices you'd expect from Windows, Mac even, uh, iOS, Android, uh, you name it. Uh, you, you know, the other thing that Equinox brings back for us um, is the ability to use uh, streaming to the computer um, or just simply use your desk phone for remote control. So like right now, when I'm, I'm sitting at my physical desk, I have a 9641 is my desk phone. And I still use Equinox to kind of click to dial, and it tells my desk phone to pick up and dial. Um, whereas as soon as I leave um, the building, I don't have a desk phone, and so I switch it into my computer mode, where now I plug in a headset into my computer, um, or if I'm on my iPhone or my Android, I can do it there as well. So it gives you the, the very easy flexibility um, of going back and forth. So like uh, Mark was saying, the you know, don't make people, don't make doctors, don't make nurses have to think about how they would do this, or administrators, you know, within the administration team. Um, finance, right, let's not forget about those guys because they're an equally valid member of healthcare organizations. Um, let them be flexible no matter where they are and let them um, tie into the resources that they need to. Another so really, back, oh, go ahead, Mark. David, if you, if you think back to um, um, the very first slide, uh, when I was talking about the fact that um, in order to be successful in this environment for the healthcare providers, one of the critical things is you need a common platform. But that common platform's got to provide the flexibility for the user to work their way, so to speak. Um, it's only been within the recent past, um, when you look at everything that, that you've just gone over, David, that uh, even from a UC environment, we really, we, we now really can deploy and roll out that common platform, but the true device independence um, and functional flexibility that's necessary to allow the users to work their way. And in the healthcare environment, uh, particularly um, uh, the provider-focused uh, community, that's critically important because you can't force them um, to, quote unquote, adopt a specific device a specific and a specific workflow. They're going to do it their way um, uh, as a function of what they believe to be most practical and most and uh, most easily accommodated. And this truly does give them that tool set to do it with minimal education, with minimal resources. It becomes an it's an inherent um, integrated uh, uh, function of the communications infrastructure. You know, another really cool device that is not GA yet, but is coming out in May, is called Vantage. You know, and I want uh, this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have one. I, <laughs> I have three of them. I so want this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's in beta right now, um, and you know, so what the role we are playing right now as part of the beta is just testing the um, the overall device and the application. Um, we're moving into more of a developer beta um, uh, shortly after. But um, it, as you probably know, if I is trying to change more and more of their lingo to get away from acronyms. So this next phone is not the A190 or the 9800 series phones. It's Vantage. Um, and at the most basic level, it is a, an Android tablet. Uh, you know, with, uh, again, high, high definition audio, great speaker, 
everything, right? A handset cradle if you want it. Um, by default, it doesn't have one. If I want to have a, a wired handset or a Bluetooth, um, you know, the, the one that you see in the picture here on the right, that's actually a Bluetooth handset. There is no cord. Um, and uh, you, you can plug it into a standard um, RJ11 jack going over to a headset or even the, uh, the small plug, you know, whatever size that is. I forget the uh, millimeter size of the uh, of a standard, you know, like uh, iPhone, right? The white earbuds kind of a thing. But the point is, um, fresh out of the box, if you just order the phone, you're going to get um, uh, the, the hardware and it's going to run Equinox. It's the exact same application that would have run on a tablet before, um, but I and I can run on on that. Um, the beauty of this, though, is it also leverages Avaya's software development kit um, that allows you to maybe create your own application. Interestingly enough, the Equinox app was written with that exact same software development kit that Avaya uses internally and that they provide to developers and to customers. So, so if David, you say, are, are, yeah, you, are you telling me that um, for uh, uh, EMR uh, systems like Epic that have got their own Android-based uh, 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 tablet apps, that it would run on something like this? Yeah, so as a, as a starting point, it, it is still absolutely an Android tablet, and administratively, you can choose whether you want the end user to be able to download apps off of uh, off of the Play Store. So on a non-healthcare related, on my Vantage, I run Spotify. <laughs> so I can be listening to my Spotify and is, if I receive a phone call, it switches over to that app, I can pick up the handset, it turns off Spotify and comes in. So I can, it's, and, and that's an Android kind of capability. But to your point, there's no reason why I couldn't run the Epic Haiku app um, natively on there. Now I think the, the next cool thing that, that we'd want to take a look at is, well, what if I wanted to blend the two? Like right now, you'd say, well, that app is just an app. Um, and yes, it can run just like any Android app. But what if I wanted to build a custom thing where I wanted to either have it communication focused, but have maybe data dips into EMR, or maybe I want to have an EMR app that, oh, by the way, has capability for phone. So it's like, is it a phone app? plus other stuff, or is it other stuff, and oh, by the way, I can also add communication functionality to it. So, so I, can easily, I can easily envision um, a use case that says a physician's looking at a patient medical record and, and wants to uh, conference another, another physician in to uh, discuss particulars about the uh, patient record, and as a function of making that phone call, this pops up on the screen. The, 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 app, the, the medical record pops up on the screen. Am, am I on track here? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and again, a lot of the question is whether or not you wanted to use the native app that the manufacturer provided, in that case Epic, um, or if you wanted to create something else. But I, yeah, what we're interested in is, is the, the customized development of, uh, of an Android app that would run on Vantage that would do the blending of both. So even in a non, right, think of your administrators, think of us as individuals. Um, the trend right now that I, when everybody I talk to says, if assuming you're not part of a communication workflow, right, where you have to answer the phone if if it rings, um, most people will say if they if someone calls them and they don't recognize the caller ID, they don't answer the phone. Um, they let it go to voicemail and then they check the voicemail and decide if they want to reply back. Um, the problem is, and we're all that way, I find out, um, is what if what if my kids call me? on my desk phone. I don't know their cell phone numbers. As long as they call me on my iPhone, I get, a, I get a screen pop. I get, hey, Ben's calling. Here's his picture. Look, here, answer the phone. Well, this um, device, and the specifically with the software development kit that Avaya provides, uh, would allow you to create an Android app that maybe when somebody calls in, I go do a LinkedIn lookup. And I say, oh, Mark is calling me. Um, here's, uh, even though you don't recognize the phone number, he's registered his phone number in LinkedIn. I do a lookup and I see that, oh, there's all these um, interests that we have. There's, um, he's in this business. Um, we have 17 mutual friends. Um, and now all of a sudden I'm getting what I would traditionally have thought of as a call center thing, right, with a screen pop, but I'm a normal human being. I'm an average user. And those are the kind of things that I'm gonna be able to build uh, with the Vantage. Um, and again, if you don't say, "Boy, this is cool. Maybe I could get there." I just need, I just need a, a new powerful phone um, with a single user interface across all my devices. Vantage plus the Equinox app um, 
comes out of the box. That's there. You know, All it's, sorts it's, of practical applications and use cases for the uh, provider community in terms of when the phone rings, what's the additional information you need, whether it be patient-based, clinic-based, or uh, caller-based. It's amazing. It's, pretty interesting. it's amazing yeah. what the flexibility is. Yeah what we're going to be able to do with this. And so we're all really, really excited because a lot of people think of Flare, right? You know, it's, oh, here we go again. No, yeah, no Flare, we go again. yeah, Flare was a very, very different goal. It rethought collaboration, but it really didn't give you, it was just a, a new user interface. Um, See, that was platform specific, and that's the yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. This so this gives not. me that flexibility, which I think is pretty cool. And as we we talked about from the beginning, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do all of these things at the same time. So whether you've got your 9608 at home, you've got your 9641 in the office, you've got an iPhone, you've got your laptop, you've got a tablet. Um, with SIP, I can connect my user and my associated extension into all of those devices, up to ten of them simultaneously. And um, through the magic of session border controllers, I can be in the office or out of the office, and it doesn't matter. That becomes the, the most powerful aspect of communication. And just saying, yeah, hey, I can receive your phone call as long as I'm at my desk, that's, that's a joke, right? It, that can't be the only way to do this. Um, and with SIP uh, and Aura specifically, that gives you a lot of those kind of flexibilities. So let's, that was the basics, right? That's the stuff that, you know, I, I still may be new for some people, um, you know, cool technology, things we should think about, but I want to shift gears a little bit and go a little bit more narrow um, into healthcare specifically. And Mark, you have a couple of, of products that you like working with, Mutari and ASCOM. Why don't you um, help us understand how collaboration works with these kinds of applications? Yeah, so, uh, and, and these are only two of, you know, uh, a, a myriad of products. I mean, there's there's any number of different pieces of uh, uh, or different applications that form this this common platform, so to speak, that can then be highly customized to to really drive not only uh, 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 information a access, but to facilitate uh, this communication and deliver and, and uh, uh, information delivery in a in a ubiquitous manner that that really functions the way the uh, uh, the user wants. So I mean, and, and I and I and I, I thought maybe the first one to talk about uh, 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 quickly is is Unite. Um, and uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, Unite is uh, uh, its origins is as a piece of middleware um, that is used to drive any number of different uh, 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 communica uh, communication and information access connections to different devices, and whether it be the electronic medical record systems, the nurse call systems, patient labs, you know, all these back-end systems that traditionally are one-off interfaces to unique application systems uh, or uh, uh, have been uh, uh, integrated by way of literally millions of dollars of, of, of software development and, and middleware, whether it be the uh, Philips and the old Emergen product, um, or uh, uh, ConnectSol and uh, uh, their uh, 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 high-end middleware engines. Unite is, uh, uh, had, a, had its genesis there, but from a very practical standpoint, is uh, uh, much more uh, flexible, scalable, um, and frankly, one heck of a lot uh, less expensive. Uh, but what it really does is provide the bridge uh, between um, the user's uh, information access requirements, whether they be machine-based, whether they be uh, process-based, or whether they be user-based, um, and the variety of um, uh, 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 targets uh, that that information has to be presented to and, and then uh, used by. And again, whether that target be machine, process, or user. So it's this device-independent environment that gives you the ability to look at and access the information the way you need it, um, and in the mode you need it, whether it be from a, a visual standpoint um, or whether it be from a, a data standpoint, and the real-time uh, uh, capability with it. So it's got the voice services, which you would expect, um, and not. And by the way, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the Myco device, which is ASCOM's device, but it obviously supports um, any smartphone kind of device as well as uh, um, uh, straight uh, 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 voice uh, voice device that can be supported through the communication infrastructure. Uh, 
but the text, the broadcast, and the sharing. Um, it provides that common platform and the flexibility necessary um, to really support the complete array of communication services, whether it be one-to-one -one or one-to-many. David, you want to flip to the next? Uh... Yeah. So um, uh, this is uh, the Mutari Vitalink, and Mutari Vitalink is kind of interesting. Um, it is um, a specific application um, that supports the notion of what we call closed-loop communication processes. So um, uh, you can think of it um, at a high level as being a notification and messaging system that supports multimedia. But what's really interesting about this is that it supports any type of uh, uh, output device or endpoint, whether it be voice only um, from a typical telephone all the way through smartphones and tablets, uh, whether it be Android or iOS. But it does so in a way that says that if your workflow that, that, uh, 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 that you're implementing um, is asynchronous, in other words, just one way, yeah, we'll send, them, we'll send um, the user or users, the community, um, a message. Um, if, in fact, uh, uh, it needs to be synchronous, that is two-way, um, this uh, application platform supports um, a closed-loop process environment such that I can send a user or group of users a message, but I can also determine if they, uh, uh, what their response is. And in, in this case, no response would also be a kind of response. So uh, it can be embedded into the individual process workflows such that um, it will drive escalation. So consider, um, um, David, I'll use the example that uh, we love to go back to, the uh, door to balloon example. Um, if uh, uh, you have a, uh, a patient that comes in with a, uh, 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 a heart attack, um, you've only got so much time before you can get them into the cath lab and uh, insert the uh, uh, catheter and do an angioplasty to open up the clog. Um, and the sooner you can do that, the better the survival rate is for the patient. Well, that means you've got to, that means you've got to notify any number of different people uh, in the hospital, not only uh, to get the cath lab ready, but now you need a hospital bed. Now you need, you need any number of different people to make this happen. Um, and you don't want to do this in an asynchronous manner. You want to do this in a closed, in a synchronous, in a synchronous closed loop environment so that you know that people acknowledge and respond pr appropriately. And if they don't, you can escalate it to find someone who can respond properly. The Mutari Vitalink uh, solution is um, a, a great kind of application, uh, purpose-built application and platform that provides all these capabilities so that you can embed it into the workflow. Um, you can support any number of different types of endpoints. Actually, it's pretty much generic at this point. Um, gives you the flexibility to support in-building as well as wide area network services and provides the user community the control, access, uh, and modalities they need to be able to really do their jobs as a function of their specific uh, uh, responsibilities rather than being forced into a specific workflow and process because of the application's inflexibility. What do you think, David? Well, and I, you know, when I think of these applications, right, you know, I, I, I'm like, hey, it looks like instant messaging and presence, right, you know, and... and uh, sort of, I, but it's on steroids. Correct. Well, and I, I, and I think that's just it, is, you know, we, you've even kind of labeled this as still traditional applications because, in a way, it's a lot like Skype for Business and a lot like uh, Equinox, but it is very focused. And I would imagine the advantage of that is... Well, it's custom tailored. The disadvantage is it's custom tailored, right? right. So, I, I mean, you want to talk a little bit about maybe the comparison of how, you, you know, the, you know, from a business standpoint of why, when, when might you want to look at a more, I'll call it a generic tool like Skype and, and Equinox versus a more specialized tool for in, in healthcare. Yeah, sure. So when you've got well-defined, that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a great point. Thank you. So when you've got well-defined workflows, like door-to-balloon time uh, in the emergency room, um, like uh, 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 well-defined uh, nursing protocols um, in support of um, uh, different alarms or lab test results uh, or uh, uh, services that have to be performed, pre be performed on the patient's behalf, this kind of application is, is terrific because it uh, uh, drives 
um, actions and tracks results as a function of those well-defined processes. Um, when you've got uh, more, um, how shall I put this, um, uh, uh, undefined needs, um, other than I know that I have to talk to a lot of people, I know that um, I've got uh, 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 any number of interrupts that go on through the day that aren't uh, prescribed as a function of a specific process, the basic UC functionality and flexibility really shines in that environment. But again, it, when you've got well-defined workflows, um, and there are a ton of them in the hospital and the healthcare provider marketplace. Um, lab result reporting and immediate actions that have to be taken from that. Um, uh, emergency codes, whether it be code blue, code red, code pink. Um, specific consults as a function of uh, 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 surgical procedures that are underway. Um, these, the types of applications and uh, traditional uh, 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 platforms that we're talking about right now really shine out and really shine in those environments. Yeah, I think that's it's pretty interesting. Of um, I would have to imagine, you know, it's kind of you know the the point of when we start moving into our next section of you know the next generation services. A lot of what we're you know the the, the you know the, the topics we're going to talk about here are a little more open ended. You know, so they give you the ability to build some of these tools um, that you've talked about. Um, but it, you know, so one, it has a ton more flexibility, but it also has the baggage that comes along with it of, okay, now you have to build some stuff. Um, and whereas, you know, these are kind of, they're, they're shrink-wrapped applications for a commonly used set of workflows. Um, and I think I for a lot of companies and a lot of the healthcare organizations, it probably fits beautifully. Uh, well, David, I, I was just about to say, I think that there are some perfect fits here and people will be able to see as we go through it because um, the one thing that you've got to consider through all this is ROI. And uh, the traditional applications that we were just mentioning, they're really expensive, um, though they fit a large audience. A lot of what we're about to talk about, I think, um, uh, at, when you look at it from a point requirement, the ROI becomes overwhelming. So let's, let's go through it. Yeah. So when we talk about next generation services, um, you know, and, 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 and very specifically, I'm talking about thinking about workflows and I'm thinking about ways to automate uh, and even augment human interaction. Um, and, you know, and, and a good example of, of augmenting things, you know, we, we have a lot of a lot of customers across all verticals who have it in their head that if they want to provide the best possible customer service, it always involves making sure that people can get to a human being, right? They always say, I don't want to do an auto attendant. I don't want to do an IVR because I want them to get right to a human being. And what we're finding, more and more people are saying, oh, wait a minute. You're, you assume that that human being is going to be as good as a computer will be. Um, and we just find out that that's not always the case. It is uncontrollable. It is unpredictable. We start introducing technologies, uh, you know, like call recording to 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 verify, you know, compliance with our model, um, and and those kind of things become very difficult. And what we're seeing more and more businesses as a whole, and healthcare is an easy, low hanging fruit area to do this in, is what if I can augment, you know, literally like um, computer augmentation where um, uh, I have, I now have the ability with some of the tools that I'm going to talk about next, uh, where I could be listening in on a conversation between two people and I could be listening for certain words, certain phrases, and assuming that one of the people we're talking about is, um, is the, we'll say the subject matter expert, well, maybe even we'll call him a call center agent. We don't have to, but um, and, and, you know, on behalf of the agent, you know, simulating almost a service observing supervisor, the system could be listening for uh, words like account balance. And on the quote unquote agent screen, we could automatically pop up a message that says, hey, I don't know if you just noticed this or heard this, but your caller just asked about their account balance. Click here and we will send them their account balance uh, via text. That's a extremely doable concept, um, and in the old days it used to be hard, and you'd have to buy prepackaged bundles of software to do that, 
And these are now things that I can do within this kind of next generation service. And I'm going to very specifically talk about Avaya Breeze um, as we come in and do that. The other thing that, um, that leads very easily into is work that Arrow um, has contributed to the, to the concept of Breeze and this workflow-centric communications, um, where we can tie our package called Arrow Connect, uh, and it allows for integration of physical sensors um, whether that's you know, pick your pick your sensor, it could be heart rate, it could be temperature, it could be humidity, it could be light levels, it could be movement, it could be all these kinds of things, and have those be either uh, components that trigger a workflow or things that influence the direction of a workflow. You know, so maybe a workflow started and is doing something. And in the process of it, it goes and checks a physical sensor and changes or makes a decision based on something physical or tangible. These exist. These are real. And what I've never been able to say before, these are easy. Um, and so that's the kind of thing that I want to talk about for the next uh, remaining uh, 15 minutes or so. And we talk about, uh, again, very specifically Breeze. Um, and to show you how not futuristic this is, it's here today. Um, in System Manager 7, you know, and this capability existed even in release 6, but generally we'd recommend at least your System Manager be upgraded to 7. Um, and we can go ahead and you'll, you'll see a Breeze icon in here, and I can click into that, and where it takes me um, is an option uh, to go into what's called the Engagement Designer. Um, so something that I can create workflows. Um, it's, while Breeze is kind of a standard component of Aura, um, I will admit the engagement designer is an optional add-on that you would get as part of that. And then it's really a matter of, well, what kind of resources do you need? Do you need a media server? Do you need, um, do you need a, an application server? Do you need nuanced speech recognition? Do you, so there's, there could be other components depending on what you're trying to build. But I want to give you a, a, an idea of how this all comes together because it's pretty amazing. Um, and there's again, it falls into the sky's the limit uh, as to what you can do with it. But it all starts when, you know, when you're building a workflow, you need building blocks. Um, and so in uh, the engagement designer tool of Breeze, you get very standard telephony things that you'd expect, you know, it's, uh, something to make a phone call or to even answer a phone call. You could allow a phone call to continue. Maybe I want to block a phone call, right? If, boy, if I had a nickel for every time uh, a customer asked me, hey, is there a way to scalably block malicious phone calls? We're getting this one guy keeps calling in to this department and I need to shut it down. And we get all kinds of creative about, you know, boy, well, let's create a vector. Let's send them to an IVR. Let's do an EC500 routed to something, you know, never, never land. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do, none of which scale very well and none of which are very flexible. Um, and so all of a sudden I could build something that, that, that the purpose of this is to block a call. Um, and so I could add a participant, drop a participant, all kinds of things. Um, but it's not li limited to traditional telephony things. You know, I have general notification kinds of things like maybe I want to send an email, I want to send a text message, maybe I want to have a, a, a a workflow simulated uh, interaction on via text message. These are things that I can I can now do. Um, the magic of it is there's you're not required to just live inside of this platform. If you have um, maybe Epic, you have uh, a Mutari where they have exposed uh, programmer interfaces. We'll call them RESTful web services. Um, I can now integrate very easily to those from within this platform. So maybe I'm just reading from an existing database. I'm updating a database. Um, I'm, I'm publishing an event. I'm getting information. I'm, I'm calling a RESTful web service because um, it, the platform already exists. I'm not going to recreate it. I just need to go ask that platform for some piece of information um, or to so trigger their it, own it, workflow. Yeah, am I correct in saying that if you have something like a striker IBED, um, which is, you know, it's got sensors all over the place for patient movement, for bed rail, for um, all, all sorts of stuff that um, those APIs could actually be driven into this and you could use those to generate communications out? Is that, is yeah. that what it's doing? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, any platform that has the APIs, right, and, and we see them. You're, you're in a hospital. I'm living this currently with uh, with a family member, um, you know, who's a fall risk, and um, the bed has sensors so that when it detects that the patient, my father, is getting out of bed, it notifies everybody, right? So it is a triggered communication workflow um, that I, as, as long as I have um, APIs and exposed access to it, I can now use that in any kind of workflow that I have. Um, and so those those become very, very real uh, and, and very, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go so far as to use the word easy, <laughs> which a lot, three years ago, I wouldn't have been able to say easy. I could have said it was possible, but it, I just said it would have t required a ton of effort. Um, that effort level has been drastically reduced because of a tool like this. Um, I can even go so far as, and, and the purpose of this call isn't necessarily to talk about contact center, but um, Avaya's next generation contact center, known as Oceana, is built upon a, a Breeze uh, uh, snap-in or, or capability, capability called work assignment. And instead of, of queuing a VDN to a vector, which if you think about the pure definition of a vector, it is direction with magnitude, meaning once you are on that thing, you are moving in a straight line and it's very static and very non-changing. This allows the whole capability of everything that all the building blocks that I've used so far in conjunction with, oh, by the way, go find me an expert in this area. I can request a resource. Um, I can even get service metrics, which will, or querying a resource, that those two together will say, hey, if I need someone who is familiar with Equinox and who speaks English um, and who has I've worked with in the past and this, right? those are four technically attributes that are now individually assignable um, and, and requestable. And I could say, hey, how long would it take to get a perfect match of all four of those uh, resources? Oh, God, it's going to take 20 minutes. What about if I only do these three? Um, oh, that'll take th uh, 30 seconds. Great. Let's let's go to that resource that matches um, the assignment of this work item. Um, and so it's all based on a very different approach. It's it's no longer um, skills based queuing, you know, where okay, I've made the decision. You're now in line, uh, and you will be answered in the order it was received. Um, now it's well. Let me compare a lot of these things. Let's go through a workflow. Let's do some parallel processing and do multiple things at the same time. And oh, by the way, maybe get to a, a skilled expert at the end of this. So it allows me a ton of flexibility. The flexibility is so much so with this tool that Avaya and the platform uh, allows you to add things into these lists that did not exist. This is where Arrow comes in, right? So Arrow added to Breeze um, the ability to connect to our Arrow Connect platform. So we use a thing called, and I don't know why my, my uh, circle is off like that, it's off by, uh, it should be focused down on this Arrow SI um, uh, area on the, on the palette, where now I can select IoT related things because that's what Arrow Connect does. It's a uh, hugely, infinitely scalable platform that allows you connect to connect sensors to workflows is really what the, 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 the end result of this is. It's a, a wildly powerful thing behind the scenes. It runs in Azure, uh, scales to millions, literally millions of sensors, um, and I can do actions on all of those. What Arrow has done is created a connector, or what Avaya would call a task, within Breeze and the Engagement Designer to access that data. So now I can just drag these items over and, uh, and uh, you know, again, Breeze is cool all by itself. Um, Arrow Connect is cool by itself. We've just allowed a method to bring it all in. So we have one particular task called Snapshot. Um, snapshot is just, hey, once I authenticate the sensor, uh, you know, and there's uh, a, a user authentication uh, or uh, authentication token, we call it, as well as a device HID token um, that tells us securely and encrypts the traffic of, okay, what am I, what, what data am I pulling um, from a sensor? And it just depends on the sensor. Maybe it's humidity, temperature, heart rate, light, UV, longitude, latitude. We have one that can detect 
the position of the sensor, whether it's been tipped on its side or, you know, just like um, anybody who plays video games, you know, the PlayStation or most of these have the six axis controllers where it knows what orientation it's in. It knows where it is in three dimensional space. Those are just sensors. Well, the beauty is um, Arrow has made the values of those sensors available to, in, specifically in, in partnership with Avaya, to tie into Breeze. I can also do trends. Like maybe um, when I pull Mark's heart rate to determine if I need to initiate a workflow, I get a value of four. Well, either Mark's dead or I got a bad reading. So maybe I should go back and say, well, hey, what, show me the last two minutes of his heart rate and give me an average of those or give me a trend. Give me, is it rising? Is it declining? Um, what's going on? And so without having to program all that math, that math is built in for some basic statistical analysis of sensor data. I can also do device control. Like some devices out there have lights and they have buttons and they have displays. And I can not only read things from the sensor, but again, depending on the sensor and the, the device itself, maybe I can tell it what to do. Maybe turn the sensor on, maybe turn it off, light up some lights, etc. Um, and lastly, we created an integration to a ticketing system. Um, specifically, you know, we use it as Arrow Insight. Um, Arrow Insight is the, what am I going to do with the data once I get it from Arrow Connect? So it goes from Arrow Connect to Arrow Insight. Um, but that could be something as simple as ServiceNow, so that maybe as part of some workflow, I need to open up a trouble ticket. And rather than have um, a wait for, waiting for a human being to submit a ticket um, to get something fixed, well, why wouldn't our workflow generate it? Um, and you'll see some examples of how I might use this. And so I've got a, a number of different options we'll fly through very quickly. Um, but these are real. They work. I, you know, they're, they exist. One is a nurse call hotline where maybe the use case is the patient needs to um, connect in with the doctor once a day to, um, to provide data. In this case, maybe it's heart rate. So they call in. I play an announcement. Welcome to the nurse, uh, nurse call hotline. Um, please put your finger on the heart rate. So it, we wait a certain amount of time, we collect the data from the sensor, we update the database, and oh, by the way, um, if their heart rate is, is within reasonable numbers, we play an announcement saying, thanks, we'll see you tomorrow, goodbye. Um, or we go in and we say, um, hey, your heart rate's a little high, if it's okay, I'd like to have you talk to a nurse, and we allow the call to go through a normal you know, nurse call hotline kind of a thing. Um, maybe, you know, to Mark's point, we've talked about door to balloon for a long time, but the integration points have always been really hard. Um, so now what we can do, you know, we have something where, okay, maybe a nurse triggers the workflow by calling into something. Um, do we update the database of the information about the patient? Um, do we go into an existing on-call directory um, that says, go find me an available anesthetist. And oh, by the way, if it takes more than um, 30 seconds, or, you know, let's switch by database, it should be more like 30 milliseconds, um, if it takes longer than that, and that's what this time boundary icon is, um, automatically open up a trouble ticket. So the system will say, this took too long, go notify the right people automatically, and get an, the available radiologist, and get the available cardiologist. Um, maybe I need to uh, reserve the room um, you know, through an, a, an existing platform. So I call a restful service, uh, for somewhere else to to maybe reserve the bed. I start sending emails and text messages to the various people, getting a response, a closed loop confirmation of whether or not they're able to do this um, and join in. And again, what you don't see behind the scenes here is um, this, I, I can provide it a multitude of emails, not just the one. So it's I, I, I get a list of all the available resources and then send them all an email, send them all a text message. Um, so, David, what I, response. If, if I look at all, if I stand back and look at all of this, what I'm really seeing is that um, the communications, the, 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 the communications platform uh, becomes the purpose-built uh, uh, platform from which uh, uh, workflows can be flexibly uh, uh, developed. Um, and integrated as opposed to buying any number of one-off applications that are out there right now, dealing yeah. with support, dealing with um, the maintenance, dealing with all the customization. You can do this now in-house in a fairly straightforward uh, uh, manner that doesn't require um, 
heads, uh, you know, uh, a heads down software development. Uh, uh, well, and that's just it. Because you put you put the tools in the hands of the people who know the workflows, right? Yeah, so you don't have to have a developer to go into. You can, right? I, Breeze is built very much on Java. You could write this entire thing without the engagement designer from scratch using Java. Um, but how many nurses know Java, <laughs> right? How many? What how you're many, telling me is if, if if I can map out the workflow, yeah. then I can get into the developer and do this myself, as opposed to let's go buy. Um, um, Spokes eNotify application, for example. Let's yeah. let's uh, go buy Mutari's uh, presence manager, for example. Let's yeah. go buy. You know, there 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 are a million of the let's go buy scenarios yeah. that that are one offs around this, as opposed to having a common platform that can deal with all of it. Yeah, and and you know the reality is, I don't think we'd ever expect a nurse to come in and, and build. No, this no, no. But the nurse could map out. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 you and this is literally how I start. You know, like I, my next example here is a, is a good one where um, I had an application where I wanted to use light as a sensor to determine whether or not a conference room was in use, um, and I knew the workflow. I drag in elements, saying, "Well, the first thing I need to do is check the light in the room," and then I'd say, "You know, and if the lights are," I knew I had to make a decision, so I brought in this exclusive gateway icon. And then I said, well, I want to play an announcement that says something um, like, hey, the room's available, go get it. I want to drop the call, I want to end. If the lights are on, what I want to do is tell the user, hey, the conference room's not available at the moment, but I'll keep an eye on it for you, hang up the call. And then I check the light sensor every 10 seconds, and as soon as the light turns off, I call them back at the caller ID that I picked up back here, and I play an announcement that says, hey, your room's available, quick, go get there before somebody else does, and I drop the call. Step number one was literally dragging on the functional components. Step number two was connecting them up and filling in the right information to pass the right variables and details. But step number one, I'll say, is the harder one of, you know, has traditionally been the harder one of knowing, um, okay, what am I, what am I wanting to do? But it's now made easy because all I have to do is drag the items in, and then I can go back and and connect the dots as to okay, well, how do I literally play an announcement? I mean, I have to I have to use a resource, I have to get some stuff, and it's all very easy within there. But maybe to your point, the nurse could help us say, well, yeah. Then we want to tell them something, and then I want to not do something, then I want to go over here, and then I, and so I, I always start by just dragging the pieces in, then I connect them up and fill in the rest of the details. And, and you know, we, we talked about- you want to, you change the way you connect it. Yeah, yeah, and the beauty is all of these apps I can drop in on any user, any any extension. So, the, the, you know, I talked earlier about the, the infamous, boy, people would love to have a, a way to, to create a, um, you know, a, a blacklist of people that I just don't want calling me. Um, or, you know, the opposite of boy, my son calls me and I don't know his caller ID, can't we change the caller ID to, to be something that I'm willing to call back? Um, and a very, very simple app, you know, proof of concept says when somebody calls you, read from a database to look up the number and see what attribute is assigned to that phone number. And if the, um, if the attribute is that it's blacklisted, just say, sorry, the person you're trying to reach is not available and you hang up on them. Um, if they're a VIP person, then you say, hey, you're VIP, your call's allowed, and as not only am I going to allow the call to come through, I'm going to change, I'm going to manipulate the caller ID by adding maybe the letters VIP in front of the caller ID. That's pretty cool. And then, you know, let it go through. And then um, maybe the other one is you are an unknown phone number. Uh, you're not blacklisted, you're not whitelisted, you're nothing. Um, then we just say, well, okay, let it go through. Just don't do anything with it. We're just going to allow the call straight to go through. And I could take this one little app, and I could apply it to every single phone number, um, every single extension, so that whenever anyone received a phone call, it did this first. So now so you, you... Can I ask a functional question here? Yeah. Um, and I really don't know the answer to this, so I'm, I'm asking flat out. Um, in the middle of that work stream, um, after you've allowed the call, because after allow call, you show end. Um, yeah. Could you put another block in there that says look for a DTMF tone? Um, and if you hear like a, a nine or a nine, you then blacklist them. Or if you hear a one, you whitelist them and so on. So could you continue to insert functions into this? Uh, that's actually, Mark, that's a great idea. Because what you could do, unlike a vector, right? Unlike a, and a lot of people want to compare this to vectors. 
um, which clearly, hopefully you're seeing this, is nowhere close to being what a vector is. But it, the, the downside to a, one of the downsides to a vector is that if somebody hangs up on the call, the, ve the, the call's done. It's over. Right. And a great example was here where, well, I, I dropped the caller and I kept doing stuff. All it, well, all it meant was to. someone yeah. left the session. And to your point, I can detect, hey, um, once the call is over, you know, the, call, the person who called you left. And now you could, just because that happened doesn't mean this ends, I could go in and say, um, do you want to blacklist or whitelist this caller? I could, I could play an announcement to the person being called, and if I say press one to blacklist them, press one, update database, and now they're in the database for the next time, and they're not blacklisted. Now, could you do so that's that very, very doable. Of, could you do that while you were in the middle of the call? So say, for example, you get a <laughs> robocall or something? Yeah, um, you, you probably could. Yes, short answer is you can. You can You can right. be listening for DTMF. You can be listening Sorry, for those. I didn't mean to get into design. To, to, yeah, to design no, but it's, here, but it's actually yeah. a really great, because one of the things that we talk about is how do we build this database? Um, you know, I'm saying I'm reading from a database. Well, you want it to be flexible enough, right? And so you'd say, well, I have to, I'll go build a database. And this is where some of the actual heavy lifting might come in. I probably need to create a web portal that a user could log in to administer it. But you brought up a great point, and I'm going to add this. Why I bring it up is I was trying. I to know it. you're. I'm. I'm. I'm going to give you credit the first three times I tell people about it, and then after and then that, it's yours. It's I know, and it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm about it, like if I'm a physician, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go update a table somewhere. But if you tell me you never want to get a phone call from him again, press five. The doctor yeah. will do that. Oh, but gosh, yeah, yeah. No, and, and all of a sudden it's it's making it easy to manage their communications, yeah. right? Because if I have to then go to a portal and say, hey, you know, had hey, your we're, we're running way over on time. We're way over. But that was yeah. fun. That, that was that was a cool uh, little deal. So, yeah. um, bottom line, uh, you know, if you want to go basic, shrink wrap out of the box applies to every human being on the planet. You go with that first group, right? And I'm going to come back to. I don't have an agenda slide. Um, you go back to this first thing, common communications. If you want something that is more custom tailored, has more vertically focused benefits, but also pigeonholes you a little bit more, you go with some of those, and there's tons of them, like Mark said. And if you want sky's the limit, but you've got to come up with the ideas, uh, then you go to some of these workflow-centric things. And bottom line is these three approaches give you a huge amount of flexibility and whatever you define as flexibility, right? Um, to get to the things, the people that you want and target the kind of communications that you want. And it's a, it's a, it's a fun time to be in the biz. Um, and it is. there's some really it powerful is. things available for you. Yep. Um, I think we're, like I said, we're over as always. I apologize for that. Um, um, I did get one question in the, uh, the list that we can hit that real quick. Um, somebody had asked about Arrow Connect, um, and is is that an Avaya thing? Because I guess they were saying that it's it's kind of a they heard about it at IUG, and yes, um, uh, it is Arrow. Arrow invented it, but um, because we are partnered so tightly with Avaya. Um, all the product managers at Avaya are just eating that thing up, and they love it. They are actually using um, our tasks that we created. Um, they are buying sensors, and they are demoing it to their customers. And all of, um, I don't think it's official, but um, Aero is very much viewed as Avaya's IoT play. Um, but but to be clear, David, matter. Aero Connect is not, you don't have to have Avaya to Correct. build IoT applications with Aero Connect. Uh, fact, that is fact. Yeah, Aero Connect existed long before Breeze became a reality, um, and so it it still exists. All we all we did was we said, hey, these are two cool things. I bet they'd be even cooler together. Yeah. So and yeah, Aero Connect at a very practical level um, is the is the uh, uh, gateway software uh, and uh, hardware application services as well as the cloud-based uh, data repository, analytics, and reporting systems um, that can be used for any number of different purposes. Um, uh, Avaya Breeze is a development tool that can be used to implement Aero Connect. Yeah. And, and the opposite, maybe, of your, your statement is true of, um, but what if I don't want to do IoT? Yeah, you, you don't yeah, have you to. Breeze. Breeze. Right. Breeze existed long before, uh, not long before, <laughs> but Breeze existed besides 
uh, Aero Connect. So yeah, you can still do workflow kinds of things. And if you don't have any need to talk to a sensor, it's still very valid. And you can they still are complementary. They are not dependent on each other. Correct. Yeah. So um, Mark, thank you. It was fun. Thank I love you. your idea. I'm going to modify that right now. I, uh, I intend to. I intend to get a byline at least for the next three mentions. <laughs> you, you totally will. <laughs>